We were live for more than eight straight hours right here on the San Francisco 49ers report for day one of NFL free agency. And I haven't left the studio yet. Why is that? That's because the San Francisco 49ers have made another addition to this roster. I'm Chase Sr. This is why you subscribe to the show for the most entertaining, informative, insightful, most dedicated Niners coverage right here on YouTube. As we approach 132,000 subscribers, we're so thankful that all of you are making us a part of your day or your night. So the report just coming down from Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network that the 49ers have signed edge rusher and defensive end Yitor Gross Matos to a two-year $18 million deal. I want to challenge all of you, say that 10 times fast, and if you can knock it out of the park, that's really impressive. Gross Matos, very interesting player here, and San Francisco clearly looking into edge rushers and very invested in the edge rusher spot. Leonard Floyd, two years, $20 million contract, $12 million in guaranteed cash year one. And instead of paying a lot of money to one edge rusher in free agency, like a Daniel Hunter, a Jonathan Greenard, a Bryce Huff, the 49ers have signed two defensive ends worth $20 million over two years for Leonard Floyd and $18 million over two years. And the average annual value here, 10 per year for Floyd, nine per year for Gross Matos. Gross Matos, a second round pick in 2020 at a Penn State. 37th overall selection by the Carolina Panthers. His sacks by season. You're going to look at this, you're going to hear this and say, why are the Niners giving this guy $9 million average annual value? Comes into the league year one, two and a half sacks as a rookie. 2021, has three and a half. 2022, two and a half. 2023, four and a half sacks. Not a lot of production for a player who's getting an $18 million contract over two years, but big measurables player, athletically, he's a freak, he's improving, he's ascending, and him as another developmental project under Chris Kosarek, I'm going to be honest is somewhat appealing and attractive here. Pro Football Focus named him the Carolina Panthers' most improved player in 2023. As for those measurables, 35-inch arms, so a massive wingspan, allows him to disengage from blockers, win some one-on-one -on -one matchups with a variety of moves on the outside, and is 6'5", 265 pounds. He had 19 pressures last year. PFF, with that write-up, on Yitor Gross Mato saying this, it is not easy to highlight someone on the 2023 Carolina Panthers. That's a great body right there. Awful organization. Who is significantly improved compared to previous seasons. However, while Gross Matos missed time due to an injury, not severe, he recorded career-high pass rushing, run defense, and overall grades in his fourth NFL season. As far as those PFF grades go, the 25-year-old, still young here, it's a part of the signing, I think, in the eyes of this front office, received a 65.2 pass rushing grade, 66.4 in run defense, and 65.4 overall. That's about league average. It's just in the green per Pro Football Focus's numbers here. And as far as traditional numbers, he hit highs and sacks and quarterback hits with 10. And TFLs with seven. Leonard Floyd, pretty solid against the run. Good instinctual player. He's wiry, he's thinner, but he's good against the run. Yitor Gross Matos, pretty solid against the run as well. So clearly San Francisco here, in targeting these two edge rushers, were looking for defensive ends who could get after the quarterback alongside Nick Bosa, but also set the edge and be better against the run. San Francisco went from the number one rushing defense in the NFL to 26th this past year. They were number one in EPA per play allowed, 12th this year. So Gross Matos, a big measurables guy, looks like he was built in a lab. A long wingspan. And that was a big reason why he was drafted so high. Hasn't fully tapped into that potential with Carolina, but you look at 6'5", 265, 35-inch arms. He also played for a really bad organization. You're banking on him becoming a really good player 
who's just tapping into his prime under arguably the best defensive line coach in the NFL in Chris Kosarek. Could he be the next Cleveland Furl? Could he be the next Arden Key? These developmental projects, Chris Kosarek has done a great job in streamlining that development. And right now, to me, I thought, okay, Nick Bosa, Leonard Floyd, maybe they bring back Chase Young. But right now, if you're paying Bosa $34 million per year, Leonard Floyd 10, Yitor Gross Matos, told you, difficult one to say, $9 million per, I imagine those are going to be your top three edge rushers with maybe another deal coming. A cheap Cleland Furl, a cheap veteran out there, because you're already investing a decent amount of money here toward the defensive end spot. As for where he comes from, Penn State has developed a ton of pro players. Now, James Franklin hasn't done a lot as far as wins against ranked teams with those stable of great players. But Penn State, no joke, covered this football program, grew up in Pennsylvania, talked to anybody who knows college football. They've done about as good of a job of developing pro talent as any college program out there outside of, like, Georgia, Alabama. Obviously, now you throw Michigan in there. I'm talking about the top-tier programs. Penn State is in that category because they have a great strength and conditioning program. And Gross Matos had some boomer bust potential going into the draft, and so far, he hasn't been a bust, hasn't gone boom, kind of been in the middle, trending toward maybe having a breakout year. Four-star recruit from Virginia, made the trip to Happy Valley, suited up for all 13 games as a reserve in his first year, 19 tackles, two for a loss, one and a half sacks. During that year, he showed glimpses of the talent that would manifest itself in 2018. Earned third team, all Big Ten honors as a sophomore, and Penn State's Defensive Lineman of the Year award after leading the team with 20 TFLs and eight sacks, with 54 stops and two forced fumbles in 13 games. Then he moved to first team all conference as a junior. He had 15 TFLs, nine and a half sacks, and 40 total tackles. He really grew in Happy Valley as a 4 3 defensive end who has a great frame. He's developed that a little bit over time, could do a little bit more. Power forward body type, not overly twitchy but impressive length, fluidity, short area quickness, explosion, athleticism, and by NFL standards, kind of a scouting report for him going into the NFL, average at the point of attack, but you add additional strength and have more efficient hand usage. Chris Kosarek is a big hand usage guy, and he can become a little bit of a better player. So again, you kind of look at some of these players in free agency as stocks. You're not looking at them for what they are right now. You're looking at them for what they can become. Of course, some athletes you look at as, we want this player right now because he's really good. Chris Jones, he's going to get $30 million per because we know what he is right now. With the player like Yitor Gross Matos, who you're hoping develops, and then you get really good sack production for $9 million per year, you look at it as a stock. You get in early, and then you pay and have the big pay dividends a little bit later. As far as the scouting profile, going into the NFL draft prototypical combination of size, athleticism, and agility, loose hips, short area athleticism of a linebacker, that's always good, breaks down plays under control in the backfield. I like the TFL ability here at Penn State. He's done a little bit of that at the NFL level. And again, that goes to show you, solid against the run. Some of the weaknesses here, Hands need to be quicker and more violent. Missed times his punch, allowing blockers to get into frame. Average controlling point of attack against power can do a better job with play side contained duties. It's another difficulty that some of the Niners' edge rushers had against the run. Pad level raises, slowing his burst to the top of the rush. So some of that stuff coming from NFL.com, but you can see kind of what San Francisco sees in the player here. Third video of the day, I believe. Eight plus hours live streaming on the 49ers report. We're going to do it all again tomorrow right here on the show.
So make sure you subscribe, join us, hit that bell icon, turn on those notifications. Therefore, when we go live, when we push out a show, you will be notified. Catch you later. See ya.